It might be a little bit boring for a lot of people. That was definitely the consensus that I was getting from the comment section of my community tab. Yo, what's good everyone? Thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you're new around here, my name is Aiden, and in today's video, we will be breaking down the first official Air Max 1 release of 2023. Now, even though this shoe is relatively new, since this shoe actually officially released about a week or so ago, we've actually seen two other brand new Air Max 1 releases come out as well. I'm also waiting on my purse to come in. I was hoping to be here today so I could do them at the same time, but unfortunately, every decided that that wasn't gonna happen. But in the meantime, in today's video, we will be taking a look at the recently released Nike Air Max 1 Crep in the soft grey colourway. I personally was really excited for these. I hope you guys are as well. And I don't want to hold you guys in suspense on the intro for any longer. So sit back, relax, and let's go ahead and get straight into this video. So just like we always do before we get into the shoes, let's just kick this off with the packaging. And like most Air Max ones, we just get that regular, ordinary, boring, bog standard red Nike sportswear box. I say this every time, you're probably getting sick of it, but you've seen one, you've seen them all, so you've seen this one. Now, if we do just take a quick look at the label which reads, we have the Nike Air Max 1 PRM, and this is in the soft grey, neutral grey colourway, and it is a personal pair as it is a UK size 9. So that's a size label for anyone who wants to see it. There you go, if you did want to see it, don't want to hold that any longer than it needs to be. And then if we do open up the box itself, on the inside, we just have your regular tissue paper. And then underneath that, we have what we came for. So let's go ahead and get straight into the kicks. So without any further ado, the more we've all been waiting for, in hand, we have the Nike Air Max 1 Crep in the soft grey colourway. Now, I do actually feel like this shoe is being a little bit overshadowed by Air Max Month. Now, of course, with it being Air Max Month, there's a bunch of Air Max releases. Like I said a little bit in the intro, since the shoe came out on the 24th of February, there's actually been two more releases, which, again, I do believe are still sitting themselves, but I feel like people are already starting to forget these, which is a little bit unfortunate. Ever since I saw the early review over on Life for Broski's channel, as always, shout out to Erkin. I was really excited to get these just based on how the materials looked, the crepe sole, and everything about this shoe just screamed it was a must cop for me. Shut up and take my money. Since then, this shoe has actually sit, and I believe even as I'm sat here doing this review right now, it is still readily available at every single major retailer in pretty much every single size. So if you are tuning into this video today to decide if this is something you want for your own collection as well, in this review, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know from materials through to sizing. So by the end of this video, you can decide for yourself whether this is something you want for your own personal collection as well. So just diving straight into this one, starting out with the upper to begin with. And for this one, I do personally feel like the upper is where this shoe shines, featuring some really nice soft suede along with some canvas and this premium pigskin leather. Add into that this really nice tonal look to the colorway itself, and with that even considering the crepe outsole, more on that later. For me personally, just based off first impressions, this shoe has actually been executed very, very well. But for now, if we kick this off from the front of the shoe and we'll gradually work our way back. At the base, but primarily on the toe box, we do have this very nice light gray colored canvas material making up the toe box itself, which has then been accented nicely with this soft suede material around the toe box on the mud guard. I would like to consider myself of somewhat of a connoisseur of good suede. We've reviewed a lot of shoes on this channel. I've had a lot of shoes in my collection personally. And I've got to say, as far as Air Maxes are concerned, this has to be up there as one of the best just in terms of the overall quality. It has that really nice two-tone variation to it. So if you run your finger across it, it does have a slightly different tone of look depending on which way you brush your finger across it. And just in terms of the overall look and feel of it, in my personal humble opinion, it is a very nice quality, even at that new higher price point of £155. Whether it merits the new higher price point, I'm not going to get into it, but I will just say that the overall quality, especially of the suede, is very, very nice in my opinion. Now we have this exact same suede material in other areas of the shoe as well. So we can also see this on the U-throw as well as in the quarter midfoot panel as we move throughout the rest of the upper. And as we then reach the midfoot of the shoe itself, we have that really nice premium pigskin leather on both the lateral and medial sides, making up this almost off-white coloured Nike swoosh. From there, as we then work our way onto the ankle collar, starting off with the top eye stays to begin with. Now, as far as the eye stays are concerned, we have a TPU material, again, featured in that really nice grey colour. And as we reach the ankle collar itself, we do have a slight shake up both in terms of colour as well as materials, as the suede itself is of a slightly longer herd suede and the colour is a slightly lighter grey than what we've seen throughout the rest of the shoe. 
Personally, I think it adds a really nice pop, breaks the show up a little bit, the fact that they have different gradients of grey, and overall is, again, of a really nice quality. And as we then continue to work our way back even further onto the heel, again, it is slightly more of the same with that dark grey coloured suede making up the heel itself. And then in the middle of the heel, we do have that Nike Air branding looking very nice as always. Now, when it does come to the lacing options for this one, I will be honest, I was a little bit surprised that this shoe only actually comes with one set of laces. Now, those laces that actually come with the shoe are just of your pretty standard flat grey shoe lace that are just a little bit boring if you're asking me. And I would definitely say that this shoe is in much need of a lace swap. I'm not quite sure which way I'm leaning right now, whether I should go white laces to match the swoosh or go with sail laces to match the midsole. So if you guys have any pointers or any suggestions on that, do make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I did think it was a little bit surprising as well that we've been seeing some releases coming with extra laces and others not, especially at £155. A little bit disappointing if you're asking me. And then the lace themselves do sit atop more of that canvas material, just like what we saw with the toe box. Again, nothing really to talk about there. As we then work our way up to the top portion of the tongue, we then have your pretty standard tongue tag featuring that Nike Air Max branding. And as we then work our way onto the inside of the shoe, we do have more of that very nice light grey colour making up the sock liner. And the sock liner itself has been constructed from your pretty standard nylon material. And as we then continue to work our way even further inside the shoe, we just have your pretty standard insole in there. And it has been done in that dark grey colour and does also feature that Nike Air branding. Very nice indeed. And then just to close that in terms of the details, as we do work our way down to the midsole, we just have your pretty standard polyurethane midsole with that visible air unit towards the heel. And the midsole itself has been painted in that very nice sail colour to add an almost aged look to the shoe. From there, as we then work our way onto the outsole, we do have what is, for me, one of my favourite details on this shoe, as we do have the crepe outsole. I would definitely say that that does add some significant weight to the shoe, so when you are actually wearing these, they do feel quite a lot more weighted than your regular Air Max 1 release. That's definitely something you should bear in mind. That's one of the things that I do feel like some people don't necessarily think of. It wasn't something I was thinking of when I got the crepe hemp's there how heavy the shoe actually is. I do feel like this might be slightly lighter than the Crep Hemp's as that was using slightly different materials which may be slightly heavier in general. Overall, it doesn't affect anything and I do think it is a really nice touch. It's just not something you see with every Air Max 1. So anytime we see it, I personally think it always looks absolutely incredible. So Crep Outsole, again, very, very nice touch for me. Now, when it does come to the overall sizing for these, I went true to size with a UK size 9. I've never had an issue with it. I have multiple pairs of Air Max 1s, as you might be able to see. So I'm going to just suggest that you just go with your natural true to size fit in whatever you regularly wear in Air Max 1s. And I think you'll be absolutely fine with that. And then outside of that, we've covered everything that you need to know from materials through to sizing. So if we now just go ahead and just wrap up this video. So just to wrap up this video so you guys can get out of here. In terms of my overall opinion on the shoe itself, to give these a rating, I'm going to say they are a very solid 8 out of 10. From the materials to the craftsmanship, especially the QC as well, which is absolutely excellent on my pair. Overall, I'm absolutely buzzing with these. It might be a little bit boring for a lot of people. That was definitely the consensus that I was getting from the comment section of my community tab. That a lot of people were saying that the colorway is just a little bit too boring. I personally feel like this is actually going to be one of the more worn shoes in the collection because of how muted the colorway actually is. So I guess it really just de depends on what you need the shoe for, whether you're looking for something a little bit more wearable, or if you're looking for something a little bit more exciting and a little bit more colorful. Depending on where you're at and what you're actually looking for, I can completely understand it. But for me personally, I think this is going to be a very heavily worn shoe in my personal collection. So, of course, very, very happy to add these in. I would love to get your guys' opinion on it as well. So do make sure to let me know all of your thoughts on my rating. Let me know your rating as well. And any other thoughts, do make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have stuck around to this point in the video, as always, I just want to say a massive thank you. If you haven't already, please feel free to smash that subscribe button. Also, do make sure the bell notification is switched on so you never miss a video. And I hope to see you all again in the next one. Peace.